What's up, linear algebras? You know what? I just found out that R is not a real word. Now I can't express how angry I am. All right, all right. So uh, in this video, what we're going to do is uh, a number of things. We're going to identify the conic section represented by the equation by rotating axes. Place the conic in standard position. We'll then find an equation of the conic and the rotated coordinates. And then find the angle of rotation. So what I might do is break this solution up into a few separate videos just to chunk it. Um, we'll just kind of see how it goes. Uh, let's start with the equation. Looking at the equation here, we have 5x squared plus 4xy plus 5y squared minus 9 equals 0. I want to point out that there is this cross term. And what that indicates for us is based on the info in the note packet is that this is a conic section that is rotated out of standard position. All right, so that means that its major axis, minor or transverse, what have you, uh, is not in perfect alignment with the x and or y axis. Um, so to get things started, what I want to do is actually move the 9 over because what we're going to do afterward is represent the left-hand side that we get as x transpose ax. So we're now looking at 5x squared plus 4xy plus 5y squared equals 9. And what we're going to do with this left-hand side is we're going to rewrite it as x transpose ax. And so we'll start with a 1 by 2, which is going to have variables x and y. We'll then set up a 2 by 2 symmetric matrix. And to the right of that, we're going to have a 2 by 1 column matrix of the variables x and y. And this is all still equal to 9. Along the main diagonal of this 2 by 2 symmetric matrix is going to go the coefficients of the square terms, so 5 and 5. Then what we're going to do for the entries off the main diagonal is take half of the coefficient of the cross term 4xy, so we're going to put a couple of 2s off the main diagonal. What we want to do next is construct the matrix P that is going to help us eliminate the cross term. So what that means for us is we are going to need the eigenvalues of this 2 by 2 symmetric matrix. So you would move on to form the matrix lambda i minus a. So lambda minus 5, lambda minus 5, those will be the main diagonal entries, and then we'll negate the entries off the main diagonal. All right, um, I'll let you know now that this matrix has the eigenvalues of lambda equals 3 and lambda equals 7. Let's focus on lambda equals 3. Now keep in mind that these eigenvalues are found by forming the characteristic equation DET of lambda i minus a equals 0 and then solving for lambda. Now as for um, lambda equals 3, um, I'm going to provide the basis vector that you get for it. All right, I'm finding this basis vector in the usual manner. Uh, the basis vector that you get is negative 1, 1. All right, but as we noted in class, um, in order to get rid of the cross term, we know we need a matrix P that orthogonally diagonalizes the matrix A. Uh, so the issue with this basis vector is that it's not a unit vector. So we have to go one step further and unitize this basis vector. So we'll divide each entry by the norm, which is the square root of 2. And we get this as a more appropriate basis vector. We're going to move on to lambda equals 7. I'll provide the basis vector for lambda equals 7. This is again found in the usual manner. You get 
1 and 1 as the entries of that basis vector corresponding to lambda equals 7. Now, same issue here, though. It's not a unit vector to start with, so we're going to divide each entry by the norm, which is radical 2 again. And there we have it. So um, <clears throat> I want to mention here that with regard to constructing the orthogonal matrix P, which is what we're going to need, note that we'll use these two basis vectors that have been unitized. You have to be careful about where you place these basis vectors with respect to the columns of the matrix P. Um, you can make a special note here. We want P such that the determinant of P is equal to positive 1. And why is that important? Well, on the part of the notes, which is at the bottom of the page previous to this, it tells us that there's a matrix P that helps us in, you know, rotating the conic section back into standard position. Um, if you notice the determinant of that matrix P, which is based on a rotation matrix, it's equal to positive 1. So we want to be consistent with that and fill in our columns of this orthogonal matrix P so that we get a determinant of positive 1. The way to do that is to let the basis vector for lambda equals 7 be p sub 1, and let the basis vector for lambda equals 3 be p sub 2. I'm going to go ahead and populate those into the columns of our orthogonal matrix P. So first column is 1 over the square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2. And the second column is negative 1 over the square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2. So what I'd like to do is just check that the determinant of this matrix P is equal to 1. We can do that off to the side. Um, we'll do our crisscross multiplication to help us out with that. Multiplying the entries down the main diagonal, we get 1 half. Then we have to subtract the product of the entries off the main diagonal, which wind, wind up being, or winds up being negative 1 half. And due to the double negative there, we get 1 half plus 1 half, which is equal to 1. So that verifies that we have constructed this matrix P appropriately. And I think that's where I'll cut this video off. We'll do the next part of this problem in a second video. In the meantime, if you have any questions about this one, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.